The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The word of God we want to consider today is again our gospel reading for this past Sunday, which was the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost. We're looking at Mark chapter 10, verses 46 to 52, where Mark was inspired to write, Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, that is the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called to the blind man, Cheer up on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. My dear friends in Christ, we've probably all heard people who said something like, I don't know how people would get through something like I've just gone through if they didn't have faith in Jesus. Or, or maybe they say, I don't know how I would have gotten through this if it weren't for my faith in Jesus. And hopefully in our own lives when we've had troubled times, and we've all had our troubled times, hopefully we've kind of said the same thing ourselves, that we recognize how much we need Jesus, how much we need our faith in him. And the fact of the matter is, is that none of us could survive anything, really, if we didn't have Jesus. But, and none of us could survive anything if we didn't have Jesus, because who is Jesus? He is the healer of our sin-sick souls. He's the one who can truly heal the hurts and the aches and the pains and the trials and troubles and the spiritual woes that we face in this world. But he's not only the healer for the Hebrews or for our congregation. What we also need to recognize is that he's the only healer who can heal the hurts of our friends and neighbors throughout the world. The world is full of people who are spiritually blind and, and physically suffering, dealing with all sorts of things. People who are looking for answers to the problems and troubles that they're dealing with. They're, they're looking for that. And now Jesus doesn't want anyone to have to suffer eternal punishment in hell. And he doesn't want people to go through this life without knowing who is the answer? Who is the solution? And what he wants us to do, therefore, is to share in his compassion for the lost and suffering for those who don't yet know him. So Jesus doesn't want us to be like the crowd that day that, well, when Bartimaeus came to Jesus and was looking for help and they tried to quiet him, tried to say he was too insignificant for Jesus. Instead, Jesus wants us to be more like Bartimaeus. And now what Bartimaeus did, did is that he demonstrated that he believed in Jesus and loved Jesus by following him. And now if we had been Bartimaeus and had received our sight back then, surely it would have been the case that we would have wanted to follow Jesus into Jerusalem, to the cross, and to the empty tomb, of course, as well. But followers of Jesus can't do that today. So how do we, how do we follow Jesus? How do we show that we love our Savior? Well, what Jesus wants us to do, of course, is to always strive to do his will for us in our lives. And his will includes that we get a 
well-balanced spiritual diet in our lives from God's word. As the Apostle Paul said, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. And his will also concludes that we do all that we can as his followers to share his healing power with the rest of the world. Followers of Jesus, the healer, share his healing power. Before Jesus' ascension, Jesus said, you will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. That's not just to the disciples, it's spoken to us as well. It's our responsibility to share the gospel with suffering people throughout the world. We have probably all heard people, including ourselves perhaps, who have rebelled against that phrase, whoever does not believe will be condemned. People rebel against words like that by saying, but what about those people in India or in Africa who have never gotten the opportunity to hear about Jesus? Will they be condemned? Will they be condemned? To those questions, Jesus does say, whoever does not believe will be condemned. That statement doesn't make Jesus unloving, though because Jesus died for all people so that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Actually, the ones who are unloving, it's not Jesus. He did his work. The one who would be unloving is you and me, believers. If we don't do all that we can to spread the good news about Jesus' healing power, See, followers of the healer, of Jesus, they share his healing power. They make sure that the message of God's grace and love gets out to the world. Now, we're doing all that we can to get that message out. When we always have our eyes and our ears open to opportunities to witness to others about our Savior, and when we give, I'm talking about our offerings here, not as little as we can, but as much as we can, so that more people in Africa and India, and for that matter in our country and in our communities, can hear of Christ's love, of his healing power from the sickness from sin. So, how are you doing? Each of us has our earthly troubles to endure. Nevertheless, because Jesus went to the cross where a Hebrew healed us all, where he lived and died for us and paid for all of our sins, because Jesus did that, we can answer that question, how are you doing, by saying, I'm fine, and not just have it be an automatic answer that comes off of our, out of our mouths. We are truly fine because as believing children of God, we've been healed from the sickness of sin and we are going to heaven. So with our own witness and with our offerings as well, let's give everyone the opportunity to hear of Christ's healing power so that more and more souls can also say, I'm fine, when asked that question, how are you doing? I'm fine, and really mean it, because their sins are forgiven, and they're going to heaven. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for coming into our world as our Savior, our way to eternal life, so that through your life, death, and resurrection, we sinners who would deserve the eternal wrath of God can know we are forgiven and heirs of heaven and are truly fine. Can answer that question, how are you doing? By saying we're truly fine because of your grace, your mercy, and your love. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always.